Hi, we will now address another important question that is about when to exit related to the various stages in the life of a startup. When to exit. That too might sound weird to talk about that while your venture hasn't started yet. But it is a very relevant question as it is one of the source of problems for many entrepreneurs and sometimes it may turn a potentially successful venture into a painful failure. That ending basically takes two forms, sell the business or resign from your position. The challenge being that the signals showing that the time to exit may have come never show up loud and clear. And the problem is that the connection between a founder and his or her venture is always very emotional, which makes it hard to realize that it is time to resign and let someone else take the driving seat. In order to help you to understand this situation, let me describe the life of a startup around four typical stages. The first stage is about building the business case. The venture started from an idea, a vision, and is going through the chaotic process of driving in the dark, testing the hypothesis and iterating fast. The business challenge at that stage is to build a viable business case, refine the technology until you have a product or a service that works, confirm that you have a market, a business model that all together will describe an attractive opportunity. The organization at that stage is like a family. It is flat, there is a leader but no hierarchy and the glue that ties the team together is the feeling of belonging to a promising venture. The spirit that prevails is the one of a commando moving in a wild, hostile forest. The role of the founder at that stage is to energize the team to carry on the vision, put his hands in the dirt whenever required, and particularly conduct the early sales. This leads us to the second phase. Once you've stabilized a business case, you will have to move to the second stage, where the objective becomes to grow fast, as fast as possible. What you've accomplished so far is great. You have uncovered a window of opportunity. So the challenge is now to preempt that window of opportunity before someone else does. Therefore, the organization must evolve quickly from a commando mode where you are exploring and improvising to a fast, very agile organization dedicated to growing fast. You have to recruit a sales force or to build distribution. At this stage, the role of the founder becomes totally different. It is now about being the VP of marketing and sales, which means helping the business to grow. The founder cannot do any more the sales. This has to be done by the sales team. And this is sometimes a difficult moment because as a founder, you have to learn to let things go, to learn to delegate and rely on your team so they will perform some crucial tasks that you were used to doing. Some founders can have a hard time through that transition and it can be dangerous. I've seen in the past year some companies that went directly from early stage achievements to bankruptcy because the founders were unable to empower the team in phase two. That transition between phase one and phase two is indeed extremely critical. Once you've preempted that territory, the third phase of your successful venture will come. It is now about consolidating the leadership position that you've built previously. The role of the leader will then totally evolve to chief strategist in charge of putting in place the right partnership, finding the smart strategic moves to lock competition out from the market or at least to slow them down and to the top manager of the organization. At that stage, you are not involved in the daily business anymore. Management is in charge. You must keep in mind the big picture. And after that, you will move to the fourth stage of your venture, the corporate CEO, that I will comment briefly because it's not in our scope. But you're now an established leader in your domain. Your company is usually public, and your main role is to represent it, to control and entertain the stock value. The point in identifying these four stages is simple. They characterize four totally different management profiles. To start a venture, you must be good at the first stage. If not, you will never have a business, right? But if you're good in the commando mode, then you will usually start suffering in the second phase, and you will probably become irrelevant in the third phase. The more you anticipate on this, the less painful the transition. Stepping aside doesn't make you any less good as an entrepreneur. It is quite the opposite. Assessing realistically who you are will make you a much better, smarter leader of your entrepreneurial team. Okay, that closes our second part on understanding your entrepreneurial profile. The ideas that I strongly encourage you to remember are 
The founders that can lead their venture all the way to the top are exceptions. And there are four stages in the life of a venture. The more you anticipate on when you might not be a good fit for the venture, the better leader you are. 